I will introduce our speakers for this panel on national identity and globalism, and hopefully we'll have uh, a little time for discussion after they finish their remarks. I initially would like to say when we say globalism, uh, we want to be clear about some of the things that are happening uh, around the world, around the Western world, um, that could be described under this uh, name. Um, people say woke capitalism, uh, the globalist agenda, uh, supranational institutions that have their own interests, their own bureaucracies that tend to disregard the particular interests of nation states, to completely ignore them. We've seen recently in Great Britain the closing of bank accounts of individuals because they uh, do not go along with the uh, woke agenda that's being imposed. So this seems uh, completely outrageous, but it's actually happening. It's actually happening. Banks are no longer um, looking to be a service, a profitable business, but are actually interested in people's views on uh, social questions and are banning certain individuals from having accounts. This is happening in places like Great Britain. So we're, we're concerned and we don't want to be uh, naive about this. Uh, we want to raise these questions. Uh, for us, national identity is very important. The nation state has an indispensable role um, in politics, certainly in European politics. We do not see uh, a federal Europe or a centralized entity with power uh, in uh, Brussels as the solution. We do not see that as the, the right direction. But this is happening. There's already discussion in the European Union about abolishing uh, unanimity voting. So basically uh, introducing a new form of decision making where each member state will not have a, a, a veto right over certain questions, for example, over perhaps future uh, expansion of the EU. So this, this is directly uh, this puts Croatia's interest directly at risk, I, I would say. And big, large member states obviously are pushing another agenda. They want to control uh, more or less everything. So these are big questions. Um, our first speaker is uh, Miro Kovac. He's a uh, former Minister of Foreign Affairs in a government in which I served also as an advisor to the Prime Minister. So we worked closely at the time. Unfortunately, sadly, this government did not last very long. Uh, in 2016, the uh, Tiko Mirovesković government. But uh, Miro is a uh, experienced diplomat who is now also commenting on global affairs in the Croatian media. Um, I think his uh, insight, he was also a, for a former ambassador to Germany. Uh, so his insight uh, is, is wide ranging and he is still an astute observer of, of what's happening uh, outside of Croatia. That's what we're going to discuss on this panel. So uh, thank you for uh, accepting the invitation, Miro. Uh, next, uh, my friend Boris Havel, uh, who is a professor at the uh, Faculty of Political Sciences here in Zagreb. Uh, Boris is a native of Sarajevo and was educated um, in Sweden, in Israel, in Zagreb, where he received his PhD. Uh, we've had a few conversations. I wish we could meet more often, but very uh, profound conversations about what is at stake. And Boris is very familiar uh, with uh, the situation in Israel, for example. I think we can learn a lot from this country about how to resist certain um, pressures and survive and survive. So I think that his, his comments will be uh, most welcome. And finally, Vishnia, I don't think there's any uh, need to reintroduce Vishnia. She spoke on the previous panel 
well-known journalist here in Croatia who's um, writing regularly on these topics and she's written uh, frequently on, on these issues as well, as well, how this globalist agenda is undermining is undermining certain basic, I would say, not just principles, but the very foundations on which uh, societies like Croatia uh, rest. And so this is, this is very important. And uh, I, I urge you all to take the opportunity to ask questions. We're here for you. I, like I, we said earlier, we meet frequently and uh, know each other quite well, but this is an opportunity for you in the audience to ask questions. So that's all for me. Um, Miro, uh, I'll give you the floor and then we'll go in that order to uh, Boris and Vishnu. So thank you. Dear Stiepo, dear Stephen, thank you for inviting me and introducing me so nicely. So when I'm abroad, I was in Finland recently for a TV panel and told my friends in English or in the States, I would be Freddie Smith, okay? In Germany, I would be, in Germany, I would be Fritz Schmidt. And in France, I would be Frédéric Lefebvre. So it's nice that I can translate easily my, 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 my first name and my family name. It's, thank you once again for inviting me. Uh, great thanks also to Witold from uh, Belgium, to Robin Harris, and also to my friend Marte Chulic, who would be made, made hearing in English. So, uh, I, I told uh, my friends that I would focus on three, on three, three things. Firstly, on um, how the world works, to my mind, my perspective. How things work in Europe, and then, of course, I would come to Croatia and focus also on my country and on Croatia's neighborhood. So, Stephen spoke about ideology, Stiepo, and when we speak about ideology in the West, it's basically something coming from the States, from the US. And uh, until 1991, we had basically two powers. We had the US and we had the Soviet Union. And we had in the West trends in our Western societies which were imposed or which came into being under the influence of the US. And we had phenomena taking place in the Soviet led bloc, logically under the influence of the Soviet Union and the Soviet society. After 1991, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we had a unipolar world. So we had a bipolar world. And then from 1991 until some years ago, we had a, we had a unipolar world. We had only one power, the U.S. And today we have a multipolar world. We have three great powers. We have the U.S., the greatest power. We have China, and we have Russia. And then we have some other powers, but these powers are less important, less influential, like, for instance, Iran, North Korea, and also some powers in Europe, traditional powers like the UK, France, Germany, and so on and so forth. So we live in a multipolar world. And when we come, when we, when we come to, when we speak about uh, the, uh, the West, basically it's the US. And today we see this conflict, this war, Russia wages against Ukraine. Without the US, we wouldn't have a solidarity in the West to assist Ukraine. Basically, the solidarity with which we have in Europe has come into being because of the Americans 
pushing hard to support Ukraine. Uh, Stiepo spoke about national identity, uh, nation states. This is something which is not always very clear. We are not in the business. And what should be clear is that international politics is run by nation states. By nation states. We have big companies, influential companies from California, but in the end they are confronted with the will of nation states. They may have problems, like for instance in Ireland or some other countries. A nation state is a nation state. Remember the example in Croatia with Agrocon, big company, systemic company. In the end, the nation state made a decision and Mr. Mr. Todorovic was ousted. So the nation states are the principal actors in international politics. We have big companies like BlackRock. BlackRock, 40% of of uh, America's GDP, $10 billion, assets under management, BlackRock, still, Mr. Fink, he depends upon the American nation state. The state is stronger, the nation is stronger than Mr. Fink, who of course is influential. So the nation states are the principal actors. And like in life, in our societies, every nation state has a tendency to maximize its power. It's logical. So the American nation states, the Americans are trying to maximize their power to have more and more influence. And when it comes to the Chinese, they have the tendency to maximize their power. And the same applies to the Russians who want to maximize their influence in, in the world. In, uh, in, the, in the countries being the neighbors of Russia. What we have today basically is a confrontation of nation states. We have a confrontation between the US and China. We have a confrontation between the US and Russia, basically. Europe plays a minor role. Why? And Seattle said it, because Europe is not a nation state. It cannot become a nation state. And if it became a nation state, which is not probable, it would face strong pressure, not only from the Chinese or the Russians, but also from the Americans, because the Americans would not allow Europe to become the dominant power on the European continent. Let's, let's, let's take a very unattractive example. Hitler's Germany. What was the aim of Adolf Hitler? The aim was to transform Germany into regional power, to make Germany the biggest power on the European continent. This is something the Americans could not accept. He was defeated, brutal defeated. And the only regional power in the world which is this is the US. In the Western Hemisphere, there's only one power, the US. In Asia, we have several powers, and the Chinese are trying to become the biggest power in East in Southeast Asia. And the Americans logically are doing everything they can to prevent the Chinese from becoming a regional power. So when it comes to Europe, Europe cannot become a nation state. It is not. It is not. Theoretically, it could work out, but realistically, it will not happen. And if it happened, it would face huge problems. When you speak about Europe, well, I think it's Europe, the problem is that World War I was already a clear sign that the Europeans lost or were losing their ability to act strategically. And this was then confirmed after World War II. The, the Europeans today, speaking about the French, speaking about the Germans, they basically lost the ability to act strategically. They still have the ability to do things strategically, for instance the French, but they do not have the ability anymore to act strategically. The European Union, which is a very nice project, we work together, we have a peaceful environment, 
There are no walls between European member states, but the European Union is a project which became possible because of the weakness of the Europeans. Just like the Croats, who wanted to join Serbia and Montenegro because they were weak in Austria-Hungary. So to compensate their weakness, they wanted to have weaker partners than, at that time, the Hungarians and the Germans in the Austro-Hungarian Austro Empire. So, in Europe, in the European Union, there is no imperial thought anymore. The French, no imperial thought. Perhaps there are books, there are people who think like that. But even Mr. Macron said in Bratislava at the Global Globe Sec recently, no imperial thought in France anymore. The Germans, the same. The only ones who still have imperial thought are the Brits, and that's why this also explains, amongst others, why they left the European Union. Because they have remnants of the imperial thought in, 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 in Great Britain. Turkey, why can't Turkey become a member of the European Union if the European doesn't change, if it transforms itself into, a, uh, 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 into something else, into something with uh, less strong bonds, which, for instance, the, the Brits wanted, and even the Americans, then it would be possible. But the Turks, with an imperial thought, cannot become a member of the European Union because they cannot accept a European court. They cannot accept that someone else makes decisions for them. So, uh, so the, the European Union and the European member states, and I saw that recently in a a uh, think tank which is run in Berlin, the uh, European Council for Foreign Relations. It's a more left-wing think tank. And they spoke about, members of me, I'm quoting them, about some kind of auto vassalization of the European Union. So the European Union has become uh, some kind of post-Kantian, post-nation-state paradise, uh, which likes other nations to make the strategic, the, the most important decisions for them. This is reality. This is reality. This is how, how things work. The, the support for Ukraine is not something genuine from the European Union. There are member states like Poland and the Baltic states, which are very much pro-Ukraine, but others were less enthusiastic. And I'm quoting once again what I said at the outset. This solidarity which we have today has become possible because of the will of the Americans to support Ukraine so hard. This is real. And as things present themselves in that manner, in the European Union, with that consciousness, uh, it is also logical that the concept of globalism was uh, accepted easily from, uh, from parts of society in the US, that the gender ideology was so easily accepted. And um, in Croatia, it is still possible to have a um, critical view. Uh, there are some countries in, uh, in, in the European Union which also where you have some heavens uh, where you can express a critical view, like for instance in France with the Figaro. When you look at German society, you take the Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung, which is a conservative, liberal conservative paper. It is difficult to find articles which are critical of that kind of reason. And when you talk to students in Germany, it is a, a gender-sensitive uh, 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 vocabulary which has to be applied. Otherwise, you have a problem. You have a problem in society. Mr. Metz, who is the leader of the Christian Democrats, CDU, uh, who uh, took over some years ago, who was a strong opponent of Mrs. Morocco, who was viewed as someone 
prone to globalism, let's put it that way. He's now making conferences with the Greens in Germany. Why? Because he understands that if he doesn't act that way, he may have problems to get to power, to take over in two years. He had recently, there was a party conference in Berlin, and a CDU party conference, uh, and he had a discussion with the former head of the um, Heinrich Böll Foundation, Mr. Fuchs. The lady who is now in charge of the, uh, the, the uh, chief economist of the Ministry of, for of Economic Affairs in Germany is a lady who worked for BlackRock, like Mr. Like Mr. Merz. She is now in charge of the, she is now the, the chief economic officer of the Ministry of uh, Economy in Germany. So this is, this is the lifestyle right now. And Mr. Merz is not stupid. He understands that if he is too conservative, he may have problems in two years and get a lot of pressure from German media. This is, this is reality. This is how uh, 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 the key country on the European continent, not in Europe, but on the continent, works and functions. So, this is the mood, let's say, in old Europe. Paris, Berlin, Germany, uh, France. At the same time, we have a new Europe. I don't like the expression, because this is by Mr. Rumsfeld, but it is, it is realistic to use that expression. And we have a new, we have a new um, uh, uh, strong connection, uh, which is uh, the Axis uh, London, strategically speaking, Warsaw, Kiev, which is a competition uh, for a problem for the Franco-German. Access. But interestingly, uh, this uh, this uh, new Europe axis is um, more conservative, and in that part of Europe, uh, these globalist values are not yet as present as it is the case in old Europe. But there's a strong pressure uh, from. Uh, let's put it that way, global circles, to impose also these values in that part of Europe. But the societies are too different, so it will not, it's not easy to achieve, because the societies are very much different. In Germany, I, I was in TV two, 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 three hours ago, a city like Frankfurt in Germany, so this is different when it comes to the society. A city like Frankfurt, which is the seat of the European Central Bank, now also in charge of Croatia because we, 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 we adopted the euro. The majority of the population is of foreign origin. So, uh, the majority of the population are people who have a German passport. But they are, they are, uh, 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 they are uh, from foreign descent. The majority is from foreign descent in Frankfurt. We look at Munich, 40%, Stuttgart, 40%. So, but in Eastern Germany, it is different. Uh, so that explains why it is easier to impose or to make these values present in those parts of Germany, in those parts of Europe. When you look at Belgium and France, what happened, the, the riots, nothing new, but once again. So Europe is changing. I don't see that uh, the tendency that it is possible to make, to transform Europe into a world power, because for that to happen, I'll, I'll repeat myself, Europe should uh, become a nation state. Seattle spoke about the idea of uh, adopting, uh, of um, banning the rule of unanimity in, in foreign policy matters. It will not happen, I think because it's from opposition also in Croatia, we have a consensus, which is interesting in, in that matter. 
uh, in, in Croatia's uh, foreign policy. So uh, we will not become a great power, speaking about Europe, but what we should do and uh, must do, I think, in a very intelligent manner, we should uh, protect ourselves, also speaking about Croatia, uh, uh, protect ourselves and our values if we see what is happening on the world scene. So I will conclude by two thoughts. First of all, if the US wants to compete, and if the US competes, it will also imply Croatia and Europe. Logically, if it wants to compete efficiently with the Chinese, it can, all, it can only compete efficiently with the Chinese if our traditional values are safeguarded. This is my, this is my, this is my firm belief. And that's why it's important that we, that there's a German, uh, I'll quote him, there's a German uh, expert in, in finance and in business, and he said, what happened basically? It is like an insane asylum. And the people who are sick, they took over. They took over. They run, they run things. So we have to get back into control. And basically, if you want to safeguard our Western civilization, we have to work together. We need, a, we need a new model of cooperation inside the West. Europeans have to be much more self-assured. They have to take over and they have to be the main guarantee for stability on the European continent. We are not Europeans, speaking about Europeans, we are not able to guarantee ourselves for the stability on our continent. It, it is as if in, in your house, in your garden, you are not able to control things. You have to call a neighbor and ask him, please come and help me. So we have to stick together in the West, compete efficiently with our Chinese partners. It's going, it's going to be very rough competition. Uh, there may be there may be a, a war very soon, or uh, some kind of uh, a threat to use force to reintegrate Taiwan. So it's, it's a real threat. So if you want to compete efficiently, we have to work together in the West. We need a new model of cooperation between Europeans and the Americans, and we. Europeans have to take over on the European continent. And we in Croatia, we have to do much more together uh, to be uh, a solid power uh, on the edge between Central Europe and South Eastern Europe. This is the particular role of Croatia. For that to uh, become relatively a strong state, strong, strong economy, and a strong foreign policy establishment, which is, of course, conscious of its obligations <coughs> when it comes to Europe, when it comes to NATO, but which will, which will also very much take into account what Croatia's national interests are, and our interest is to have a peaceful environment. And Vishnu will certainly speak about what is going on in our neighborhood, when it comes to Serbia, and these ideas about a Serbian world. Um, this is something which we have to take seriously. It is not compatible with the values, foreign policy values on the European continent, and I will conclude with, with that. I saw that the German government commented upon a Human Rights Watch report, which was published recently, and the German government um, condemned the idea of a greater Serbia. There was a question in Parliament, which is a good thing, that also someone outside Croatia sees that risk. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias.